have that sorted, yeah? All right. So, we're going to do a quick review of what you guys saw on the web quest. Can we? Please, thank you. All right. So, one of the essential questions, why fermentation? I know it's a simple question, but it's something to think about. We don't have to ferment things, but we do. What other things do we ferment besides bread? Beer. Beer. Wine. Vegetables, kimchi, wine. What about beef? Right? Cheese. Cheese. Yeah. So fermentation is very important to uh, humans. Um, and, and it's seen in bread. Because without yeast in bread, what is it? Unleavened flat bread. Unleavened bread, yeah. Yeah, no fermentation. Yep. Absolutely. So we went over the four pillars in the in the web quest. Flour, water, yeast, salt. Saccharomyces cerevisia is cultivated. Saccharomyces exibus. My Latin is pretty terrible. But that's the wild natural yeast. I spoke to uh, Focaccia too about this, right? So one of the reasons why sourdough is possible is because of wild yeast. Very, very, very difficult to make wild yeast with cultivated, uh, excuse me, sourdough with cultivated yeast because it can't live in the acidic environment that sourdough is. All right? So it's important to note those two different yeasts have different uh, acidic levels where they thrive. And salt. Salt does a few things, right? What does salt do? Flavor. Flavor. Strengthens. Strengthens. Strengthens the gluten. It also, it also uh, limits the yeast, right? So if you don't put salt in it, the yeast go crazy, your bread rise, it falls, and you have not very good bread. All right, why is bread so ubiquitous? How did it get to be so? Bread has been, been made for over 6,000 years. Uh, flatbreads, again, wild geese uh, in the air, and then a lot of breads in the Middle Ages were made from, uh, in, someone said beer earlier, so the, the brewers would give their spent yeasts to the bread makers and the bread makers who make it. Amazing history about bread. All right, so we talked about the 12 steps in the in the uh, web quest. Yes, Scaling, sir. mixing, bulk ferment, punching, dividing, rounding, bench press, shaping, proofing, scoring, baking, and cooling. So you're gonna see different sets of the 12 steps. There's also 10 steps. So you know, some of them might be out. Uh, I brought in, uh, some of you have seen it, my textbook from when I was here uh, a <laughs> long time ago. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we well, don't need to talk about that. But <laughs> that has 10 steps. Uh, you talk to Cyril Hitz, Chef Cyril Hitz, anyone knows Chef Hitz? 10 steps. Uh, the book, the book has 12 steps. The Johnson Wales book has now has 12 steps, but they're a little different than this. So it's it's not exact, you know, you can see it different ways, but just to understand that that this is the basic getup. Scaling, mixing, the three different stages, uh, maybe you saw that today, the pickup stage. That's when the water and the flour are just getting together, right? And then it's starting to pick up. And then the cleanup stage, that's when it's taking it off side of the bowl and then the development is when it's all cohesive and homogenized and it's working nicely around the bowl and after about 10 or 12 minutes or five minutes depending on the type of bread you're doing if you can get a window pane out of it where you pick up a piece of the dough stretch it out and if you can get it stretched out without it tearing that's about when it's ready to go all right did anyone see that today did anyone get to see the window pane all right okay so, any questions on any of this? All right. Not so much. The three types of bread, and obviously there's also laminated bread. But for what we're doing, we want to 
we, we talked about lean hard, medium enriched, excuse me, medium enriched and rich. Anyone tell me what a rich dough is? Sweet. The sweet dough, right? Higher percentage of sugar. And uh, as Vanessa and I were talking about earlier, you need to, it's, it's beneficial to even use a different type of yeast for that that thrives in that high sugar environment. Because although uh, yeast eats sugar, too much sugar can be detrimental to yeast. Kind of like if, I don't know, I like hamburgers, right? If I had one hamburger, I'd be happy, but if I had 15 hamburgers, maybe I would be happy. Yeah. But rest assured, if I had 15 hamburgers, anyone here that wanted one would have one. All right, does that make sense? Yes, yes. What about a lean dough? What about a lean dough? French bread. French bread? Okay, so what's it, what's in a lean dough? Yeah, the four pillars, salt, water, yeast, flour. You can add a little bit of oil, right? So, so um, I like to feel. I feel that these are pretty much lean doughs. What we make today, they're not. They're not really rich. Although we did add an enrichment to that. The original recipe, as it stands, and you'll try that later, um, is just the, the the four pillars plus a little bit of oil. All right. So it's important to know your hydration levels and your your um, moist your your percentage levels, water to flour. That's going to be your hydration. All right, that's going to help you out for this. And then enrichments as they go, you need to adjust for that. All right. If artisan breads origins aren't ancient, then what is artisanal bread? A lot of the artisanal bread we see today. You think, oh, that's how they used to do it in the old ways. In fact, that's not how they used to do it in the old ways. These are all, a lot of these, uh, what we look at as, as antiquated techniques are quite new. Anyone guess what decade uh, ciabatta was created? Good, speak up, 14. 1400s, ciabatta, 1400s. Anyone else? 1800s? 1970s, 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 1980s, Travato was created. Italy thought they needed something that spoke to them. <laughs> Did you know that, Chef? No. Travato, 1970, 1980. And uh, it's great, it's a wonderful bread. And you think, oh, they must have been eating this way back when. In fact, no. So, something to think about, you know? All right, so we talked about the baker's percentage, right? And if I'm in the way, guys, just let me know. <laughs> um, so so the, the different, this is the uh, hydration levels, right? So did, uh, what was the hydration level of the focaccias without any 63%? Okay, so that's a standard dough. What about the um, the pita? Does anyone figure out the hydration level of the pita? All right. Well, you'll have to by the end of class, right? But as they go up, the rustic dough much higher, much higher moisture levels. All right. Those are going to be long, long ferments. Any questions? All right. And flour is always 100 percent. Even if you're using three or four or five different flowers, right? Yes, sir. All right. Enrichments, additions. These are things that were out on the table that you could have put in. Um, they obviously. Sh yes, Chef. Um, Chef, I have a question. Um, I know uh, enrichments can extend the shelf life. Yes. But can there be an enrichment that does the opposite of that? Can you also? Can it can it limit the uh, the shelf life? That's a good question, and I, 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 I don't have an answer necessarily for that. There's probably something, there's certainly enrichments that, if aren't handled properly, are not going to benefit the dough, right? And we may actually find that today with the, the ones we're working on. Uh, not necessarily the wonderful loaves or breads that you guys have created, but the ones that you were handed. Uh, 
in interest of time. So um, as far as limiting the shelf life, I don't think so because if you break it down to the, the, the four pillars, that's going to be uh, the bread that's going to go to scale the fastest just because there's, there's nothing, they're so lean, there's no more, there's no fat in them, there's nothing to extend that shelf life. Right. Any other questions? Milk solids uh, affect shape and volume, but it does absorb water. It'll make the dough very tight if you don't add extra moisture. Fats, as we talked about, shelf life and structure, and it does affect the gluten, the eating quality, the texture, the tenderness. So you think, again, going back to laminated or rich doughs, that crumb is so almost buttery, you know, because of all the fat in it. All right? So, under preferments. So these are some preferments that uh, I made this morning for you to show. Uh, and so a preferment, it's a preparation that's done either the night before or a few hours before the bread. And it, there's a variety of them. We'll talk about some of them. But uh, what it's going to do is it's going to enrich your dough without even adding an addition. Preferment is typically just flour, water, and yeast. A small amount of yeast, but given time and allowing that yeast to do its work, you'll see that it, it creates a wonderful aroma. Uh, and, and you know it, Vanessa was talking about uh, uh, baguettes made with goulash. You get almost, almost a sourdough quality. And on that, sourdough is a type of preferment. Sourdough starter is a preferment, it's called a levain as well. Um, but I, I suggest you to, to look at preferments if you want that effect without having to deal with a sourdough starter. Has anyone done a sourdough starter? It's a lot of work, right? Alexa? You have to take it home. You have to take it on vacation with you. A little, that's my sourdough starter. I'm going on vacation, right? Yeah. And you, you name it. What was, it. what was the name of your sourdough starter? I think it was Jim. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes? Martha. Martha, as in Martha Stewart? Why not? So yeah, it's a lot of work. And if you do not feed it on a regular basis, if you do not utilize it on a regular basis, it'll go bad. It'll, it will go sour. And one of the misconceptions about sourdough starters, people think when you open up a sourdough starter, you should be like this. But I think you'll see when you smell this bulish, it's very sweet. It's got a lovely smell. And if you're using your sourdough starter properly, that's the way it's gonna smell, all right? So, uh, some are generated with commercial yeast like this. Uh, a sourdough starter, again, like we talked about before, wild yeast because it, it can, withstand that highly acidic environment. And the easiest way to make a sourdough starter is to find some clean air, probably not around Johnson Wells campus, but <laughs> go out to the countryside with a jar of water with a tight lid and open that jar of water up and let it sit for a half an hour, 10 minutes, five minutes, close it back up, bring it home. You'll have collected some wild yeast that's in the air and you can make your sourdough starter from that. Sound like fun? Yes, Bread's fun. Bread's fun. Yeah, bread. <laughs> so, all right. So, coolish. So, coolish is um, is a preferment that is about uh, a one to one ratio, about a hundred percent hydration. Can someone tell me what hundred percent hydration means? Equal parts flour. Equal parts flour. There you go. Right there. Right. So equal parts, equal parts of flour and water, you mix that up, and depending on how long you want that to sit is the amount of yeast you'll put in. Understanding that the smaller amount of yeast, the longer the time it is, the more complex the, the, the flavor is going to be, and the more complex uh, it'll be as far as the texture of your bread, right? So this is a foolish, come smell. We're going to talk about this piece in a little bit, guys. 22 
So 33% of the total flower weight. Did you get too much of a width? Yeah. <laughs> Any questions on Felice? Now, how would we use that? We would do it in a lean dough. We would do it in a lean dough, right? And you would add in again, and we, we will talk about this in a little bit, but you would add in 22 to 33 percent of the total flour weight, depending on how you want to do that. Um, so, again, we'll talk about that in a few slides. So, Abija is an Italian ferment, and of course. Italians gotta have their own. They got their ciabatta. So the bija is, is much different. Bija is very close to an actual bread dough because it's only about a 50 to what is it, 50 to 70 percent hydration level. So you're not gonna get that intense smell that you got from this. And this, because this is just mixed up and set for a long period of time, and those glutens relax gluten strands relax. You can put that in any time during your bread making. I put mine in in the beginning of the bread making so there's a nice incorporation. But Bija, uh, because it's worked more, it has to be worked more to get that water into the flour so the flour can absorb that moisture. It's worked longer so you want to add this in near the end of your meat. Okay? What, like, in the pickup stage, well, going from the pickup stage into the, uh, the, the cleanup stage, that's when you want to add this, okay? And you'll see there's not as much smell, but that can last for like two days in your refrigerator, and you put that in and you're gonna get a really nice, uh, attractive crumb and texture and flavor from that. All right, sound good? Yes, Chef. Yes, Chef. All right. And this is gonna be about, you see the bottom, this is gonna be about 30% of total flour and water. All right? So, there's another one that I did not make called the Pat Fermenté. Pat Fermenté is very simple. It's, if you're making bread every day, right? You start and you take a little piece of that dough off and you put it in the refrigerator. Then the next day when you make dough, you put that in. And you keep doing that, and you keep doing that, and that's a path for Monte. It's just, it means old dough, and it's, it's just a piece of dough that goes back in. And, but it's been allowed to sit overnight, and it's going to gain some of the similar qualities of this. All right? So, some other performance that you may have heard of. We talked about sourdough, there's sponge, a starter. All these are pretty much the same. Levan, Madre Bianca, and a mother. Um, these are all preferments. Madre Bianca, I couldn't find any information on. If anyone finds some, please let me know. I'll be interested. Bullshit, man. <laughs> you know a Madre Bianca. No, Excellent. No, no, this is separate. Go ahead. So, it's storing for these all the same? Uh, I, you can refrigerate them, but you can also freeze them. Um, a bija can be frozen for about three months. This is about uh, two days. In the in the um, in the refrigerator, you might be able to push it to three. But a, a police, you're you're using it, you're making it to use 100% of it when you need it. So it's it, you can go online. There's there's just ratios. If you want it in eight hours, you put X amount of grams of yeast in, right? And then you use it in eight hours, in 12 hours, 24 hours, things like that. So. You can, you can refrigerate, you can freeze it, but it's typically, I find, use it, use it right away. So, so you can't take a part of it and use it in, like use half of it in your product and then save it make half? It again? Like a sourdough? Like, like almost bring it back to life? Like a sourdough? Come back up again, yeah. I would, I would think you could, yeah. Yeah. We're leaving the, the foolish at room temperature though, right? Uh, yes. We don't want to put that in the fridge. No. No, no. But the bija you can you can leave overnight at room temp or put it in the fridge, whatever you want to do. Um, either way. But yeah, I mean a coolish you, you could probably utilize it like a sourdough, which is what you do with a sourdough. You use half and you feed it back up to the level. 
use half to get back up to the level. Um, I mean, yeah, sure. Let's try it. Any other questions? All right, so the baker's, prefer baker's percentage as it refers to preferments, okay? I just did a, a fake, I mean, it would probably work out, but uh, just a mock-up of like a basic bread dough, okay? And I use round numbers to make it easy. So if you are using a poolish, 1,000 grams flour, 600 grams water, 26 grams, and 11 grams of yeast, right? You'll use 22 to 33% of the total flour and half of the liquid. So half of the liquid is 300 grams of water. 30% of the flour is 300 grams of flour, about a 16th of a teaspoon of yeast for a 12 hour ferment. All right, so that means that if you're using a pre-ferment in this, when you make this dough, you need to subtract that out of there, right? So you're gonna do 700 grams of flour and 300 grams of water, and then you're gonna have to put your pollution. in, all right? Abija is gonna be a third of the water and double the flour. Same recipe, 400 grams of flour, 200 grams of water. So when we make our basic dough, if we were using Abija, what would the recipe be? What would we mix? 600 grams flour. 600 grams flour and how much water? 400. Come on. 200 grams of water? 400. can be mixed at the beginning, and in the case of the beef, at the end of the mixing process. Sound good? Yes, sir. Uh, all right. I do hope you loved this lesson. <laughs> and I did have a bowl. Any questions? Any further questions? When do we eat, uh, chef? <laughs> you gotta make the bread. All right, let's get back to making bread, guys. So yes, chef. No, and I'll tell you why because we have some stuff on the side afterwards. But I wanna, we're gonna be tasting this bread to other breads that are basically exactly the same. All right, thank you.